Trash Fiction Mystery Quilt. Hi, I'm Linda Smith. And I'm Sue Ellen Jennings. Are you a cleaning freak? I wouldn't call myself a cleaning nut. I mean, I don't dust my house every week or anything like that, but I am a cleaning freak when it comes to my sewing machine. If you don't clean your machine after each project, I can promise you that it isn't sewing at its peak. And who doesn't want their machine to run like it did when it was brand new? Let's look at some of the basic machine cleaning steps. Hello everyone, it's Linda from Flash Fiction Mystery Quilt. Today, we're gonna to go over how to clean and maintain your sewing machine. Now there's basic principles that apply to all machines, even if your machine is different from mine. And those are the ones we're going to be going over with. Sit back and enjoy. Let's start with the basic things that you're going to need to clean your machine. First, you're going to need your screwdriver. Mine happens to look like this. You're going to need, obviously, a fresh pack of needles because you should change your needles whenever you clean your machine and between every project. You're going to need your little nylon brush. Yours may look different, but all machines come with a little nylon brush. I have these really great micro-tip cleaning little wands. Um, they're from Quilt in a Day sewing machine cleaning brushes. And let me pull one out and show you what they look like. They have this really great little micro tipped fuzz gatherer. And they fit in small places and they gather fuzz fantastically. So I always use one of these. So to start with, we're going to want to unthread it. And when you're unthreading your machine, always snip it from the top and then pull it through the bottom, like so. And I have a very fine thread on here, so it may be really hard to see. Then you want to remove your needle. Now the reason why you always want to pull your thread through this way instead of pulling it backwards is um, if you'll think of like all the lint and everything that is down here around your foot, if you pull the thread back up and out the machine from the top, all that lint will get pulled back up into your tension and um, start to build up in here and we don't want that to happen. So unscrew and take out your needle, which I did, and then remove your foot. And again, your machine, I've got a walking foot on mine right now, your machine may look different and but it, all the basic principles here are the same so i'm just going to remove my foot and then i'm going to remove my bobbin and set it aside now for my machine it has screws that hold my plate in, and they are right here and right here. And so I am simply going to unscrew them, and that way I can remove my foot plate. Don't lose your screws. One of 
once you get it started, you can just spin it with your fingers. So that's really nice. Make sure your foot is up and then remove your plate. And so the first thing we're going to clean is the plate and you just want to brush it. This is the back side of my plate. You just want to brush it with your little brush all over so that everything's clean. Now, if your machine is like mine, it has a whole bunch of little gizmos in here and so you want to be gentle with them so that you don't break or cause any functions of your machine to not work. But you can see it pulling out the pieces of lint that have gathered up in side where my feed dogs go. I love cleaning my machine. If you don't clean yours after every project, you should start doing that because it makes such a great difference in your sewing and in how well everything, um, your stitches look and how well your machine runs because most machines absolutely love to be cleaned. The next thing I'm going to clean is my little feed dogs. And they always have, as you can see, a bunch of fuzz. It makes me feel like I've really accomplished something and I've extended the life of my machine. A lot of people take their machines in every year to get them serviced. My machine is five years old and has never been in for service. I, um, this particular brand of machine, the Juki DX2000 QVP, um, doesn't require oiling and I've been real fortunate that it hasn't needed anything but just really good cleanings like this. Look at this ball of fuzz here. There's my stack of fuzz right down here I'm keeping. Now, once I have the majority of the fuzz out of the top, then I'm going to take off my bobbin holder because down inside of here always gets really really full of lint but before I go there I'm going to take my little brush and I'm just going to clean this out really well getting inside all the cracks and crevices and on the underside as well And you see it's all nice and clean now. Inside here though is a whole different ball game. You can see how much fuzz it's built up from sewing the last quilt I finished. And there's all kinds of little crevices in here that can hold. Once I finish with my brush, then I'm going to go back through again with my little sewing machine cleaning wand to get everything else out that the brush may have missed. And as you can see, it had bunched up a whole bunch in the back, back here. Now, I'm going to spin my hand wheel to see what else I'm missing. And there's a lot miss being missed. So take your time. Just enjoy this time with your machine, giving it the care it needs. Now, if your machine has ways to reach down inside like mine does when I went through this hole right here. I was able to get a bunch of stuff down in there that was through the sides that I couldn't get to unless I 
had that wheel spun around like I just did. So don't be afraid to turn your hand wheel just a little bit and then you can put it right back once you're finished. Now with these things I can reach down in here and I don't jam it around or pull on anything. I just reach it down to catch any dust that has fallen down on the sides that you can't reach with your little brush. And I just keep cleaning and keep going back in the same spot until my um, little sewing machine cleaner thing comes back empty. And when it comes back empty, then I'm fairly sure I've gotten everything. But you can see all the different places, the fuzz from quilting and sewing hides. I use a um, a Wonderfill thread that's polyester for piecing. It's called Invisifil. So it does not have a lot of lint to it. This is my, um, right here is my needle cutter. I'm a th not my needle cutter, that would be horrible, is my thread cutter. And so my little wand, cleaning wand, can fit up in there and grab anything that's up there. And I also will um, go at it from the side. And I will lower my foot and press the cut thing so I can see it come out and see if there's anything stuck to it that I may have missed. And it looks good. Once you've finished cleaning your machine to where you're happy with that you've gotten everything that you can get out of it, then we'll start to put it back together. I'm still getting dust out, so I'm going to keep on cleaning. Also, pay close attention to the sides of your feed dogs because they gather up dust and um, lint as well. I am, if you haven't noticed, going in every single looking cranny that my machine has everywhere I can possibly see where it might hold some lint. If you've ever thought about using compressed air to clean your machine with, don't do it because all it does is drive all the lint and everything that you're watching me pull out down inside. Very little of it actually would get blown out. It would just go down inside your machine and back into the back, back in here, and prevent the internal mechanisms from working like they're supposed to. And that is a definite we don't want. Now, I am going to lower my foot, excuse me, lower my um, needle and clean off here as well. And the brush would work fine here. My machine has a tendency way up here, and you can't even see it, let me see, way up in here to get lint deposits. And so I'm always real conscious to go up inside to make sure that there's nothing up there that I'm missing when I'm cleaning. Now I am going around the outside edge of where my foot plate goes on because it tends to get a little bit on there as well. And then I'm going to bring my arm back up and put my foot plate on. E there. So that I can lower this handle, my um, thread cutter hand, or my threader handle and brush everything off here. Whoops, before I do that, let me close this up so that no lint gets in there. 
And now all I'm going to do is reverse everything. I'm going to put my screws back in. I'm going to get this out of the way before I knock it on my floor and then I have to vacuum again. But that's what came out. So then I'm going to put on a fresh needle. I screw mine in by hand and then I tighten with my um, screwdriver once I've got it well in. There. We're going to get us a new needle. And for most machines, your needle will have a um, flat side, like that is right there, and then it'll round off on the other side. And um, the flat side goes to the back. So I'm just going to put that in and push it up as high as it will go and hand tighten my screw right here and then come back and tighten it with the screwdriver. And then it's time to put my foot back on, and I'm not going back with my um, walking foot. I'm just going to go put my regular foot back on, and I'm going to clean it really well as, as well, and then put it back on. Screw that back on. And once I have it hand tightened, same as my needle, use my screwdriver right like that. And then I'm going to put my bobbin thread back in and re-thread my machine. And I'm all set. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something. And if you don't have these little sewing machine cleaning brushes, um, I know they're available on Amazon and probably at your favorite quilting store as well. They are absolutely fantastic and you get 25 of them in a pack and they can be reused. Like this one I will reuse for my next cleaning just because it's no longer white at the tip. See, boy, is it never not. Mm -mm. Um, it still is good to pick up lint, so they last for a long time. Hope everyone has a fantastic day, and we'll see you again on our next video. Bye, y'all.